Welcome back. Tim Miller is a never Trumper and worked on Jeb Bush's presidential campaign back in 2016. He is a writer for the Bulwark and this week he wrote a really interesting piece about political super PACs and how they are just a waste of money in presidential campaigns. And his clearest example of this is the DeSantis super PAC never back down. That PAC had a hundred million dollars and more money it spent the more DeSantis has dropped in the polls. I started by asking him why he thinks super PACs like DeSantis are failing. So I lived through this in 2016 with Jeb. I was on the campaign side. We had a well-funded super PAC. And at the time, it was thought that this was a path to success in politics, right? You, you raise a ton of outside money from rich folks. You know, they put that money into ads and, and you know, other, uh, other grassroots activism. And that gives your campaign this huge boost. And there's a lot of journalism about this, covering the money race, about how important that is. And the article I wrote is that this is an outdated understanding of how presidential campaigns work. And, and that the, these big money super PACs are, are useless at best actively harmful, really, maybe at certain times at worst. I think DeSantis has seen that. The PAC's been actively harmful for him in certain ways. And, and that it, it shows that people don't understand that this might work in lower level offices where people don't know the candidates that well, or only people that watch this show know the candidates. But in presidential politics, Everybody knows the candidates, especially Donald Trump. In this world where people get information in their Facebook feeds, their TikTok feeds, it's on cable news and sports talk radio, they're talking about politics. I, you know, politics is everywhere. And so this idea that you can run these 30 second TV ads in Iowa and try to convince people, you know, who, who have a cultish following to Donald Trump to change their mind based on, you know, some generic cookie cutter ads or, or a one door knock on the door. I, I, it's just out, this is outdated. These are strategies from, you know, the 20th century. I, and so uh, these super PACs, I think people obsess over them in the media and the campaigns and, and people are getting rich with them. The campaign strategists get rich with them and they're all worthless. And, and nobody wants to say it uh, because the, the political consultants don't want to say it because they're making money. And, you know, I think that rightly people who come from a journalism background, you know, can't be maybe as forthright as, as I can be coming from having been on the campaign. Oh, you're, you're killing me here, Tim. I mean, how, how, how are they going to pay my salary if these super PACs aren't putting ads on TV, local TV stations like mine? I, I, I have a feeling well, we're going to get cut off halfway through this interview. You know, and they we're just going to go to black because what you're saying is so heretical. Um, but sorry, I, I think it's going to happen that quick, Jim. You're going to be good. Maybe people start listening to me in 2028 on this, but I think you're good this cycle because for some reason these guys keep lighting, torching their money on fire. Even though if you look at DeSantis as prime example, uh, he spent, uh, you know, almost probably a hundred million now. We won't know in reports in January, but tens and tens of millions. He's gone down. He's lost half of his support. What's that money gone to, uh, you know, besides paying your salary and, and beach houses for some political consultants? Well, let me ask you this. Is it just a matter of how they spend the money? Is there a place, maybe not in the scheme of things of the 30 second ad, but you, you, yeah. you also said not even the door knocking. Is there not a place for PACs to play a role in gra building ground organizations? I don't think, no, look, I, I think that there are certain things you can do on the margins. I mean, supporting super PACs that try to get to low information voters and so, and move, move, pe you know, get people interested who aren't interested in politics, you know, increase your vote share by one or 2%. Sure. Are they useful? These negative ads that people hate, are they useful? Sure. Probably. Right. Like, but no one's doing that right now against Trump. Right. I and mean, had you spent 50 million just talking about how Donald Trump's a big loser who didn't build the wall and actually lost the election and, you know, with that have worked maybe um but nobody's doing that uh, so i think that there's certain things that you can do but but what really doesn't work and, and what i was focused on are these hey i'm a candidate and, and i'm gonna have one pack try to promote me and use this money with 30 second ads and grassroots stuff to try to take me from zero in the polls to 40 or take me from 10 in the polls to 40 like ron DeSantis, like tim scott like nikki haley that's not working who has gone up in the polls the most in the Republican side of the cycle. Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, he had no PAC most of the time. He just got one, but they spent almost no money. How has he done it? By going on podcasts, doing interviews like this. He's everywhere, making news, you know, uh, uh, being brand aligned with what MAGA voters want. That's how you do it. Like the, that's people actually want in this day and age, 
people you know have so much access to candidates they want to know you and hear about you and learn about you and vivek is doing it mayor pete did that in 2020 almost wrote to vic from no to victory not with big money ads but by doing this kind of earned media stuff so i, I really i think there's certain niche things that these packs can do but but the notion that these hundred million dollar packs can can save a candidate is folly it's a waste what do you see the state of the race right now on the Republican side? Total dominance for Donald Trump. Um, you know, I, I think that it, it's it's crazy. I, you know, I made the analogy in the article. It's like you have one candidate that's Coca-Cola, right? The voters, you know, there's 20 percent of the Republican Party doesn't like him, but 80 percent of the Republican Party likes him. Forty percent are obsessed with him. He's the dominant band in the party. And all these other candidates are in the field and they're, and they're trying to say, hey, I want to displace the dominant brand without criticizing it. Right. I mean, you know, you would if, uh, my analogy was if the RC Cola, you know, marketing team went to the execs and said, hey, we can take out Coke by running 50 million dollars in ads. But we're not going to mention Coke. We're not going to say anything that's wrong with Coke. Uh, we're just going to hope that people want to start with a new face. That is that is irrational. That's delusional. And that's what DeSantis, Scott, Haley, that's what they're all doing. They're barely criticizing Trump. You know, he's beating them by 40 points. You know, to 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 be the man, you got to beat the man. And none of them have tried to do that. Well, Chris Christie has even even to some extent, um, the former vice president uh, has tried a little bit. You know, Asa Hutchinson has tried a little bit. Will Hurd. None of them have gotten any traction, though. That's true. Criticizing Trump is necessary for beating him, but it's not sufficient. Uh, here's the thing, Jim. I, I wish this wasn't the case. I was a Jeb guy. I was a Mitt Romney guy. I'm an old school establishment moderate Republican. Jeb wouldn't say he's moderate, by the way. I would say I'm moderate. Um, that's me. Uh, so I wish Will Hurt or Chris Christie could do it. This Republican Party doesn't want that. The Republican Party voters are MAGA. So so I, I said from the start, the nominee is either going to be Trump or it's going to be somebody else who can give them the MAGA policies, the MAGA energy, the MAGA attitude that they like, but without some of Trump's baggage. And I think that was DeSantis' initial pitch, right? I'll give you the MAGA policies that you like, but I can actually win. I can actually get them done. And I thought that was a good initial pitch for him. You know, who doesn't appeal to me as a moderate anti-Trumper, but I think it appealed to a majority of the party. Uh, but unfortunately, he lost he lost his way on that pitch. And so I think that in order to beat Trump, someone has to emerge that has a MAGA message, but can also offer a contrast to Trump. It's ch it's challenging. And that's why nobody's been able to do it so far. Why do you think DeSantis lost that argument? Where, where, do you, where did he go wrong in this race? Yeah, um, a couple of places. Uh, number one, he didn't focus on his core message. Uh, when was he doing the best? Right after the midterms. That's when he was doing the best in the polls, because voters understood that he, you know, uh, he had done the migrant gambit, which I thought was gross, but MAGA voters liked. You know, he had won in a huge landslide. The media didn't like him. Sorry, Jim. Uh, and so and that appealed to Republican voters. Right. And so, so they're like, hey, maybe we can go to this guy. You know, he also is anti-elite, anti-establishment. He also is MAGA. He can also get stuff done, but he 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 wins, right? That was his that was his elevator pitch. Then what happens? Well, he starts going into these weird culture war fights. He gets he picks this fight with Disney. You know, he tries to get to Trump's right on all these random culture war issues. He, he gets down into the details on this stuff. He launches the campaign on this weird Twitter space. You know, he he, uh, he doesn't do that good on the campaign trail, right? So all of a sudden, this guy that seemed like a strong candidate that was going to be able to beat Joe Biden and, and, and do and, and was in touch with the base kind of seemed more like a Ted Cruz, kind of like a weird candidate that's culturally conservative, but not exactly what people are looking for. So I just, I think that he lost... The, the center of the elevator pitch. And if I was him, I would have got in this race right after the midterms and just driven to death this one message. Trump's message in 16, make America great again. DeSantis's in 24 could have been make America great by winning again. Simple, easy, that's all I'm gonna do. And um, the devil's been in the details for him. How much does personality play in this for DeSantis and the, the struggles that he's had sort of connecting with people I think that, I mean, he does, it's the old adage, the more people get to know him, the more they find reasons not to like him. It seems like more and more of the case here. Yeah, I think it hurts. I, people underestimate Trump's appeal is not just ideological, right? It's also people like the show. 
you know, he's very charming. DeSantis doesn't have that. Uh, Trump's charm doesn't appeal to me, by the way, but other people, certain people like it. Uh, well, but let, me, Trump- let, me just, let me just jump in there. I, I always thought, as you said before, DeSantis's argument was Trump without the drama, but what yeah. it turned out to be was Trump without any of the entertainment value right. that Republicans so desperately want sometimes. Yeah, I think that that is definitely part of it. So he didn't offer that, okay? Now, I don't think that that necessarily was a death knell. Here's where it became a problem, right? Is if your argument to voters is, I, you know, can give, like I said, I can give you the policies that you want and actually win. Well, then you need to look and sound and seem like a winner. And and he did after the midterms. But then as you get on the campaign trail, this is where the personality stuff and the culture war stuff plays against you, right? It's like, are we, you know, voters are smart. They started to be like, are we sure this guy is actually a better bet to win than Trump? You know, I, I, he seems weird. He seems extreme in certain places. Like, you know, maybe we're better sticking with the guy that, that you know, brung us. And, and I think that if you look at the polls now, uh, that's pretty much true. DeSantis and Trump poll about the same. And so I think that he lost that argument and I, that his personality and his campaign style played into that for sure. 